Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. My name is Jose Negrete of Negrete Photography. And this will be a video series of where I go through a photo a day and I edit and I show you kind of my thought process both before I took the photo, um, what went on as I was doing the shoot, and everything that kind of goes on in post-processing, right? Um, and we're hoping to do a photo a day, um, but jumping right in, uh, this is a photo shoot I did with a model called Tamsin, Tamsin Bennett, an amazing person to work with. Um, and so this is kind of a, a small little shoot. It was very last minute, um, but she definitely rose up to the occasion and helped out. Um, one of the photos I wanted to do was kind of like a, a countryside, like Carrie Underwood type vibe. Um, her boyfriend had this massive pickup truck that I was like, hey, can you, you know, jump on the bed of it? And, and we got some cigarettes here and we'll light some and we'll get that look, right? And so immediately I took some photos of her in the back and I'm kind of go through some of them, the ones I took. Um, and so I had a couple as well. Um, I told her like, hey, be, be rude to me. Um, you know, throw some smoke at me. You kind of have to get the model going. You can be very, you can be awkward. You have to be a little bit creative in how you talk to them. And so I got a couple shots in. Um, yeah, of course, that's we'll go through those in later episodes. Um, but here are some of the shots we did of her like actually blowing smoke. I don't really want that. Um, I didn't get any good like full smoke effects. So I'm just going to have her like kind of holding the cigarette. Um, so then it comes, comes down to, well, what photo do I want out of this little collection? Um, I actually really like uh, the one of her with like her mouth slightly open. Um, I think having your mouth completely closed, um, while okay, there's something different about having your models open their mouth slightly. So, so maybe when you're taking photos of your models, um, especially if they're females, tell them to tell them to breathe in a little bit. Tell them to breathe in through their mouth. Um, that'll give you that like more cinematic look. We don't want this like completely closed mid talking look. We definitely do just want a, a, a nice you know natural breathe in. Um, and so we're going to import this in we're using Lightroom. Uh, those are other photos that we'll edit that showed up in the, in the background, but we're just going to look at this one for now. Um, and okay. So going straight into it. So, so what are my first things, right? Is, is first is what do I want in the frame? Um, because when I'm editing, you know, I might lose track of, of kind of some stuff that might be in the frame that I don't want later. Um, so I generally like to crop things first, just have a better idea of what's going on. Um, so I go over here, crop it in. Um, and by the way, this, this, um, photo series is definitely geared more towards people that have a better understanding of Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, I will have other series geared towards, you know, if you're completely new to photography, um, just keep in mind that this is definitely for someone who at least knows how to use the program and has a general understanding of photo editing. Right. Um, so getting right into it. So what did I do? What did I crop that? You know, so, um, oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering my workspace, I have it on uh, white. So sorry if I burned your retinas. It's usually on medium gray when you start off, but I have it on white just so I can make sure that my exposure is correct. Um, it's the easiest way to tell exposure. And then later, if I get a little bit tired, I'll switch it over to medium gray or completely black. Um, but I usually just leave it on white if I'm shoot, um, editing during the day. Right. Um, so what did I crop this? Uh, you know, well, first of all, she's not completely in frame. Uh, in the center, sorry, you can kind of see if you pull up your, your uh, crop tool, your rule of thirds really shows that she's more on the left hand side of the frame. Um, but my biggest priority right now was this like red thing that showed up. It might have been the pack of cigarettes. It didn't come out in the frame. That's OK. Um, but I don't want that. And I don't really feel like going through Photoshop and, and you know, um, using a, a content fill aware. So I'm actually just going to crop it out, you know, and then I'm going to make sure that I lower this down. Uh, to get her full body uh, because she's got a sick tattoo. Unfortunately, when you get the whole thing, that's all right. It says loser on it. Um, and so now she's in frame. She's in center. Um, we don't got that annoying red thing in the background. So we're good to go. Now, a um, little bit about my settings. I shot at ISO 100. Uh, I'm on a 50 mil lens right here. It, if it's a Sigma 1.4, I shoot Sony. Um, this is at f2.0 and uh, 1 3 20th of a second. So kind of my process of, of when I'm shooting is I prioritize my aperture. That's always my thing is what look do I want? Why well, I want, you know, I wanted some, some bokeh in the background, but I also wanted a lot of her face to be in focus. You can kind of see that there's a lot of details to her face. Um, I find that even if you shoot with lenses that are like super sharp and whatever, if you go to like the super wide open, you know, 1.4s, uh, 1.2 um, f-stops, you lose a lot of detail. Um, even if this lens is sharp, just at, at those wide aperture ranges, um, you will lose a lot of detail. So yes, you will get more like blurry background. If that's the look you're going for, great. But I'm really going for like face detail. So I, I went up a little bit more to f2.0. I still have that blurry background, um, but I keep so much more skin detail and texture that I want for later, right? So um, then from there, then I change 
my ISO if I can. I, I go as low as I can. Um, honestly, with Sony's, you can really shoot up to, to uh, ISO 400 without getting any um, any grain. But I just keep it at F100, just to, I mean, uh, ISO 100 to be safe. And then uh, once I set those two settings, uh, the aperture I want and ISO lowest, I will change my, my shutter speed to, to get the correct... Um, exposure right so so this might change anywhere from you know 120th i mean one 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 twentieth uh one two hundredth you know one five hundred depends on on the daylight depends what light i'm getting if i'm using a flash etc etc right but thankfully everything lined up um, and i can kind of check here on the histogram as well this looks generally fine right so i'm not going to do much with exposure um i might tune it up a little bit um just a teeny bit and i will actually lower the highlights so what that does is it makes the image a little bit brighter um a little bit more poppy but by lowering the highlights, I don't get any like, you know, where, where skin texture just gets lost because it's too blown out, right? So I'm going to lower that out. I'm actually going to raise the shadows just a little bit. So I can, if there's anything, actually, no, I'm going to leave that there. I usually raise the shadows if there's something I'm, I might be missing. Um, but it looks like everything that I want actually in the model is there. I'm going to lower the blacks. Oh, I'm going to go back to contrast as well. And so contrast, that gives that pop, you know, if it's too low, you kind of get kind of a flat image, but if it's too much, it gets too intense. So I'm not going to go that much, just, you know, maybe F, you know, plus seven, plus 10. Um, and then just because of the contrast, she looks like she started getting a little bit more orange, at least from, from my look. So I'm actually going to change the temperature a bit, um, just a little bit. So it's a little bit more blue, right? And that kind of makes her stopping as orange. Um, of course, you know, everyone's monitor is different, you know, as far as I know, she could be blue and my monitor's off, but from, that's what I see. I don't want her to be too, you know, too much on, on the red hue. I want her to be exactly where I want it. Um, so I can do that. Um, whites, I, maybe I raise them up a little bit. Um, whites do a similar thing that, that highlights do, except they will only raise, from my understanding, they will only raise whites that are there. Highlights will, will increase the actual light that was projected onto any surface, right? Um, I love raising vibrance, vibrance first. Um, if you raise saturation, everything looks kind of weird and fake. Um, I do vibrance and then sometimes I'll leave saturation by itself. Maybe I'll raise it up like by one or two. Um, this case I'll do one or two. And then just, just from what we did alone, you can kind of see the difference, how it pops up a little bit, right? You can kind of see that. And then as well as a crop as well, keep kind of keep that in mind is that was very important. Uh, so now we're going down, um, to our HSL color sliders. Um, so what is our priority here, right? I can do actually a lot of things. Um, biggest things is whenever you're working in like nature's nature and stuff, um, you want to make sure that your uh, the colors that you get from your leaves are what you want, right? So for example, if I wanted to go for a more fall look, I would maybe go the green, raise it all the way to the yellow side, and then maybe get the yellow. Uh, let's see. Now it's going to change here. Maybe a little bit of orange. And a lot of this as well as playing around is, is, are stuff, is stuff in the background being affected. Maybe it's the aqua. Yeah, see how the aqua changes that a little bit. Make and then when you're when you're changing things, make sure that you look at other parts of the image. So so not only is the aqua changing um, the the leaves in the background, it's also changing her shorts, right? You can kind of see here. Just a little bit, just a little bit, but just kind of keep that in mind that that you know, look at the whole image, not just what you're you're editing, right? So this I I kind of I'm just gonna leave it how it is, and for now. I'm actually just going to leave it green. I, I like the green little vibes, um, and so I'm going to leave it a little bit green. I might make it a little bit yellow. Uh, we don't want it to be too too overly green. It's going to look fake, um, so we're going to leave it. And hey, if you have a personal preference, it's up to you. A lot of this is the type of vibe you're looking for. Um, but I just noticed as well that my crop isn't exactly how I want it. So one thing as well is when you're looking at crops, you're looking at straight lines, right? You're looking at straight lines, you're looking at symmetry. So for example, here we can see that the, the, the truck is cropped right at the corner. And here we have a little bit of space, right? And as well, maybe this side, in my opinion, is lower than this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe straighten this out a little bit. Maybe tighten this up. And so here's kind of the issue I face uh, when editing these photos is... Let's say if I shot this at the wrong angle, you know, this is something that I should have seen from the camera um, is that I was slightly to the left of the truck and therefore I cannot get this perfectly even or if not, um, the model will be not in the middle, right? So if I go here, right, and I crop it the same way that on the left hand side, you can see that she's kind of leaning a little bit to the right. Maybe I can turn it, but then the truck might not be perfectly centered. And another issue I have right now is that this yellow thing is kind of cut out. Um, so at this moment, I have to decide as well, like, do I want this or do I want the entire yellow bit, 
right? Maybe something like that. But you know what? I kind of like what I did there. You know, I like that it's it's more in frame. And honestly, if it's cut off, you can't even tell it th that the bit ends there. So it's okay. We can leave it there. Um, so check her face. Cool. Um, I'm not going to touch any of the clarity or dehazing. I'm going to do that in the sharpening section. Um, while I'm here, uh, lens profile. Um, I like doing lens, lens corrections. Um, it's not super important because really what this is mainly doing, chromatic aberration, uh, erasing it, unless you have a terrible lens, you don't really need to click this. Um, always do it. You know, it doesn't really hurt your image. Um, but in higher end lenses, it doesn't really do much from what I've seen. Profile corrections is just more of like um, if there is a weird like distortion, like if you have a, a really wide lens and maybe you might make your image a little bit um, rounder or, or, or thinner, um, that'll fix it. And in other images that we'll look at, you'll see a, what a difference this, this might make. But another thing that profile corrections does is that it, it takes off any vignetting that your, your lens might do. So um, I actually like vignetting here. Um, and so I'm gonna add it in press crop vignetting just a little bit, just to kind of like highlight her, um, make her the star of the show. Um, go back here. Let's see, is there anything I want? Honestly, at this moment, really all I'm gonna do is raise the saturation of, of the yellow. Um, I'm gonna do both to kind of I'm gonna do both um, extremes to kind of see what it does, but I like I really like like the the empty beer cans in the back. Um, you know I think it adds to the vibe, and so I'm actually gonna raise it. It also brings out our hair a little bit more of the yellow. Um, it's up to me if I can if I want to change it or not. I'm honestly gonna leave it um, how it is. Um, but if if the model has any issues with it, I I would go back and and desaturate it just a little bit, right? So um, everything's looking good. Cool. So I would move on from there, and then there's more stuff you can do. For example, if I wanted the 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 leaves in the background to be a little bit brighter, maybe I I, I raised the the luminance. Um, but I kind of like where they were. So not much I'm gonna do there. Split toning. Um, you can kind of add more colors. Um, to different parts of the image. Um, I might actually do this. Hold on. And we can go over this more in a bit. If, but if I want more of a, like a yellow rustic vibe, maybe add a little bit of you know brown. You can kind of see to a lesser extent what I'm doing. Um, but I I might like how it is. No, I'm gonna put a little bit. There we go. And hey, this is completely raw, uncut footage. Uh, this is exactly how I think when I'm um, editing a photo, and you can kind of you know go through it and and see what I'm thinking. Um, sharpening. I'm gonna sharpen a little bit. Um, I actually think that. Um, Lightroom's sharpening can get too extreme sometimes. Um, so I don't go too hard in. Like you can kind of see that's a lot. Um, what I do is when I actually export the file, um, I will use the output sharpening option. Um, for screen, I'm not standard. Um, and I'll kind of go from there, right? But here, I'm just going to leave it. Um, and really from here, um, just because of how the, we took the image, there's not really much else I want to do. Um, <laughs> kind of looking around. Nope, that's really it. If, if there's more grain in this image, if I shot it like at ISO, you know, 800 plus, then I would maybe go into the luminance and, and do some noise reduction. But other than that, we're fine, right? Um, so from there, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? So now I would go into um, more specific details. Like if there's something small that I want to change. Um, and I, I would really go in and like, look at the skin, for example, like, for example, there, there's uh, a couple of like, you know, skin blemishes that I would maybe remove, um, for more, um, for bigger jobs or for more, um, you know, important ones, I would go into Photoshop and do some stuff with, um, um, a frequency separation and do some edits there. And I will go through some of that stuff in, in later videos, but right now we're just going to do some quick spot edits just so we can get those skin blemishes out of here. So we'll just go through that and kind of look around. Cool. And just in case as well, I'm gonna go through the, um, the adjustment brush and I'll do some teeth whitening, just a little bit. I'm gonna lower the actual amounts because I don't want a lot. And I'll go in here and just do some small stuff. Because I, I hate whenever I look at other photographers and they, they leave their, their models as teeth like yellow like i get it you know you're going for a natural look but but you know we, we all want to feel our best when we're you know in a photo um i know that if, if i was taking a photo of i'd want someone to make my teeth naturally white so and hey sometimes people you know maybe they have a yellow drink before a red drink whatever 
Let's not make sure that it comes out in their photos forever, right? So um, that was the basic spot removal and adjustment brush work. Maybe I want to bring these eyes out a little bit. So I'm going to use Lightroom's um, Iris Enhance feature with their brush tool. There we go. Maybe I'll bring them out just a little bit more. And I'll add a little bit of contrast just so you can see the difference in lines. Clarity is great. And so now you can kind of see the image coming together. Um, it kind of pops a little bit more, and I like that, right? So what is next? So now we just kind of go through the skin, uh, make sure there's nothing like super glaringly obvious that we want to fix. Uh, let's see. Nothing. Cool. Cool. Uh, one thing I do want to do is I, I kind of want to bring this tattoo out just a little bit. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go create a new brush. Um, and I'm just going to bring out contrast, just two, and then blacks just a little bit. And so I'm just going to paint over this. And you'll kind of see it pop out a little bit. Do you see that? Just It's just a little bit. And make sure as well that you have auto mask for most of these things. Um, and that just makes it to where your brush kind of stays where you want it to. It won't kind of go over. Um, and you'll see right here. You see that? How we're bringing it out just a little bit. Um, you don't really need to do this for most people, especially for people that have had t their tattoos for longer. You want it to fit, you want the, the tattoos to fade a little bit. Um, but for this, I kind of like how it's coming out. We're going to go in here as well. Pop all of this out. You know, we're not going for anything fake. Um, that's another thing too, is we don't want to, you know, go crazy and, and make it like super black. Like, no, that's not what we're going for. We really, we really want to just do kind of a, an enhancement of what the camera naturally captures right so here we go you can kind of see right there and you can see you can kind of see the difference so we go before and after it just kind of helps the the tattoo pop out a little bit i might do a little bit more uh let's see yeah i'll do a little bit just just a teeny bitty right And maybe I'd make this a little bit more blue. No, I don't like that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to the split tony I did. I'm just going to take it off. I think it added too much brown and it was kind of throwing me off. Yeah. So you see that there's not like, it's not a massive editing process. Um, and, and in more videos, we'll go through and we'll kind of delete small stuff that I don't want. For example, here I would probably... Um, you know, spot removal of this, but I'd probably do it in Photoshop. See if we can do it here in Lightroom. And maybe do something like that, but make sure it's a, you know, it's a perfect job. You know, just small stuff that might, that might change how you, how you look at the image. Um, and then as well, in, in later videos, I'll go through the process, uh, my process in Photoshop of kind of removing all these stray hairs, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of like how that all works. Um, you know, if, if there's any questions you have, you know, please leave them in the comments. I'm, I'm going to be doing this like like one video a day. Um, so there's something that, that maybe you didn't completely understand. I'm hoping that in later videos, it'll all kind of connect and make sense, right? Um, so this is kind of just a process. You know, it's a quick edit. It's something you can do in, 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 in literally five minutes or less uh, once you know what you're doing. Um, but also it's making sure that you set up the shot right. Like I know, like this is the girl I wanted um, for this country shoot type vibe because she is very country-ish right um and you know her boyfriend had a massive pickup truck everything kind of lined out um how we wanted and so that's kind of what i wanted real quick before we leave uh maybe i want to make those jeans pop out little bits just a little bit no i kind of like the color where they're at see you know you're never going to be happy with an image um, that's another thing too is is you're always looking to strive to, to do something different um, and how to improve yourself constantly, right? Um, so, hey, this was an, a fairly easy shoot to do. Um, thank you again for Tamsin to, for modeling for me um, and for lending me her time. You all have a wonderful day. This is Negarete Photography, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.